Hi besties, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're having an amazing day. What a story I have for you. So, David Dobrik has been getting called out, honestly, for the past couple weeks really badly by a lot of ex-members, and as we know, Trisha has been going full force against him now for a couple years. <laughs> she does that with everyone though. So, with Trisha, people were less listening, and now I hate saying that, but again, Trisha does come after everyone, so people were like listening to her story um, about David less because they were like, oh, you expose all your friends, like are we supposed to, you know, think this is credible or whatever? So David has vlogs, and in the vlogs, it's kind of like there are a bunch of characters, and it's all his friends, or friends. Now, they have their different narratives that are going on within it, and you know, honestly, the videos at a time for me were very enjoyable. Um, kind of less so these days because they just feel very disconnected and weird, but obviously we're aware now there's a lot of drama happening behind the scenes, and one of the main characters in these videos, as in people, was Big Nick. Now, that was one of their friends, and the constant jokes that were included whenever he was part of the videos was about his height um, and just other things about him that were not, you know, typically things that the audience would feel comfortable making fun of about him. And so what we have now is Big Nick is actually coming forward and speaking of the toxic work environment with David Dobrik and so I have an article to read you and a video of him speaking up. He was on the H3 podcast and he talked about this toxic work environment and it leading him to almost wanting to, you know, not live anymore, which Whenever you watch David Dobrik vlogs, they're so happy, they're so upbeat, and it's so interesting and so scary to think of, you know, the more negative uh, side behind the scenes whenever these are being creative, and creative, created. And it's just, it's, it's not nice to hear, and it just poses a question of, like, we've been hearing things from Trisha, and Big Nick is saying similar things on how they made him feel as well. And so let's first of all just get to this article for a bit of context about this entire thing. Then we're going to watch what he had to say. Y'all hear that? Not my brother dropping like so many fucking books or so many fucking little cartoon toys or something. It's... <laughs> I hate this house. <laughs> Not to go there, but this house is so old and you can hear every single movement from someone and he does not shut the fuck up <laughs> And he like drops things and he like streams and he's so loud <laughs> so, <laughs> so just know if you hear that, I don't know why he's doing that, but you know what? Enjoy your life. <laughs> so here we go. It says a former member. This is by Kat by the way. We love you Kat. Kat Tambarge a former member of YouTuber David Dobrik's vlog squad said the group was toxic and like a cult, which is two statements that Trisha also said about it a year ago or two years ago. So again, here we have David Dobrik and here we have Big Nick. So let's hear what this article, it's a pretty quick article because we're going to get to the video. So it says, David Dobrik is a celebrity YouTube vlogger known for his short funny videos with his friends. The vlog squad has brought David Dobrik nearly 19 million YouTube subscribers. Now, a former squad member says the group was toxic and like a cult behind the scenes. And again, knowing that the videos are so upbeat and watching them, it's just so wild to imagine, you know, what could possibly be going on behind the scenes. So, YouTube star David Dobrik's vlog squad wasn't always the wholesome friend group it appeared to be on screen. A former member said in an explosive interview, which we are going to watch a clip of, with H3H3 Productions' Ethan and Ela. So, Nick is better known as Big Nick, appeared on the H3H3 podcast to explain why he stopped appearing in Dobrik's channel in 2018. Now, a big thing as well was a lot of the friends in these videos just kind of stopped appearing in them. Like, some of them were going, some of them would get a reason, and some of them wouldn't, and then people are starting to, like, come forward with their stories, and it just, it was not a good situation for David, and he stopped uploading videos at the start of this pandemic, and, you know, it kind of worked out well for him, not only just because of the pandemic or whatever, but because so many of his friends were exposing him, so it kind of allowed him to be like, oh, I wasn't uploading videos anyway, you know what I mean? And uh, it's interesting. But what I will say is that the time that this article came out and the H3 interview came out, David uploaded a new video for the first time in a year, so maybe a bit of deflection? Who knows? So, David has nearly 90 million subscribers and is well-liked by Gen uh, Z YouTube fans. Um, is that Gen Z? Gen Z. Z, Z. Is that the same thing? 
As you can tell, I dropped out of school. Um, and has been compared to reality TV host like Jimmy Fallon. He even took over Jimmy Fallon's show for an episode. On his YouTube channel, um, he used to upload like four minute long vlogs um, featuring funny skits, again, funny skits, um, with his friends. He stopped posting videos uh, while everyone was quarantined. So, Big Nick has 1 million YouTube subscribers of his own, and he first found internet fame on Vine. He was one of the big Viners, where he initially was even more popular than David Dobrik. Um, he has dwarfism, and Dobrik often made fun of his height uh, during the Vlog Squad appearances. In his recent H3H3 appearance, he said that the jokes actually hurt his feelings and eventually led to him leaving the channel. He also said that the friend group's behaviour towards him could be cruel and was damaging to his mental health. His candid interview shines a light on the reality of popular YouTube culture and the platform's most beloved and most profitable stars. Um, on a recent episode of, you know, Frenemies, Trisha Paytas spoke up about David Dobrik as well, and Paytas' ex-boyfriend, Jason Nash, who is one of David's, like, closest friends as well. Which is really weird, because David is, like, a 50-year-old man, and whenever he met David, he was, like, well, like, 18 or something like that. And also, it's just weird, the, like, power dynamic, but that's a whole other conversation. So, Trisha described the friend group as toxic, and so Big Nick was agreeing and saying, yeah, it was. Um, it's kind of like a cult, Big Nick said. I would come home so drained, especially mentally. He said that he still loves David Dobrik, um, who he still has, you know, that he would talk to on occasion, and he said that he always liked uh, Jason Nash. But he said that the other members of the vlog squad would actually gossip about him and the other members in private. So just that it wasn't even like this wholesome grip or like friendly grip, allegedly, that they all liked each other in a big friend grip in, you know, any sort of nice way, that that wasn't what was happening. And just hearing that is very shocking because if you've watched David or you haven't, his videos are very like, we're besties, we're wholesome besties, like nothing is going to break us. And so hearing stuff like this and a lot of people saying the same thing is... Kind of damaging. So here's another quote. I always remember talking to my friends afterward, like, yo, I've got to get out of this. I can't do this anymore, Big Nick said. That was me behind the scenes the whole time. I was just constantly stressing about how do I escape from this. Uh, Big Nick said that when he first met David Dobrik, um, he had, you know, three times the following that David had. But whenever David transitioned into YouTube, building his massive audience through daily vlogging, he said that the relationship became more of David using him and his physical appearances as punchlines, which if you watch David's videos as well, you will know that a big sense of his comedy is making fun of the other people in the um, videos, which is funny because they never make fun of David, but it's always David making fun of other people. Um, and he said it contributed to him struggling with depression, including feeling suicidal. So here we have David and Big Nick as well. So the kind of pictures that, um, you know, they would post together would, people are saying that, you know, David was always highlighting his height again, and just a lot of people are very upset about this. So here's another quote. I did allow it, and that's partially my fault, for, um, you know, allowing David to disrespect me in the videos, and so then everybody else could get the notion of, okay, we can disrespect him too, um, because our master does it. Um, he said, I'm fully responsible for allowing it. I'm just kind of disappointed that nobody really thought it was wrong. Which, again, huh. In public, um, he said that the fans of David Dobrik would approach him and make uh, jokes about his height like David did in the videos. Because, obviously, like, taught, learned to fucking behavior. Um, he said that his experiences were um, kind of like high school bullying. Okay, not to quote Gabby Hanna, but high school fucking bullying! Sorry, I had to. Um, that the friend group was like, and it was just like, you know, manipulative and evil and nasty. And so for a long time, I felt worthless being in those videos. I was like, dude, why am I even here? What is the point of my existence? He is just using me like a punching bag. So now let's just get straight into him talking about this. So I have a minute clip here to show you of him talking about suicidal it. and that David was not taking her seriously and was encouraging about Jason to cheat on her and all that stuff. Do you have any insight to all that? Um, I don't have any insight on that. I wasn't there for majority of the the time that she's referring to. Mm. And there are, like, other sides of the story, too, that I was present for. Mm. Um, and, yeah, like, it, that's kind of a tricky thing because, like, I, I can feel her on the whole, like, you know, feeling suicidal part. I mean, for a long time, like... I felt, like, worthless being in those videos. Like, I was like, dude, why am I even, like, here? Like, what's the point of my existence? Because I was just treated like this, uh, 
like this uh, punching bag, right? Mm. Like everyone's just uh, joking about me, like mocking me. And then the fans in public are doing the same. And like, I had a good long look in the mirror. I was feeling suicidal and... Like, I was like, wow, I'm like really depressed. Like, and that was kind of my... Um, signal to be like, all right, dude. Like, I, I realized. Right also, there, isn't it not really like, weird that the fans would come up and make fun of his height? Like, even if they were seeing David doing it, like, even at most, you'd be like, okay, they're friends. The fans coming up and doing it is so I weird. It's like there, treating him like a like prop. Followers, fame, money, none of this stuff is worth it if I'm getting to the point where, like, I don't even want to live. Yeah, you know? Of course. Like, and so I had, like, and honestly, I'm kind of glad I went through that because it kind of broke. <laughs> In a way, like, the way I viewed success, right? As a kid, I, I got big online, and I just equated online. success with money, followers, fame. And then I got to the point where I'm like, look, I'm gaining all this stuff, and I'm more depressed than I ever was before. Yeah. So that was kind of like a big, um, uh, I would say, like, twist in my life that I actually did not need. Mm. I didn't need to go through that because it actually made me um, more mature, I feel like, now. Like, I was like, wow, I'm like... This is posing a lot of questions, and this is really bad for David, because whenever you have Trisha saying this, people are like, okay, Trisha complains about everyone. But when you start having people just disappearing from the videos without speaking up, and then someone who was a prominent figure, first of all, like Trisha speaking up, okay, but then also like Big Nick, who was one of the main people as well speaking up, it's not a good look for his brand, it's not a good look for him as a person, and him not addressing any of this, and not... It's very weird that he's, you know, being so silent about this. You know, I can see him not speaking up about Trisha or whatever because Jason was dating Trisha. But whenever, like, your supposed friends are coming up and saying that they still love you, but this is how they were treated and it needs to stop, and you're not saying anything, it's a bit weird. And I want to know, like, what your overall opinion is on this. Again, a lot of people are siding with Big Nick because, you know, a lot of people are saying the same narrative of David Dobrik and the work environment. And it's like... No one wants to watch a funny YouTube video and then later find out that, you know, it was actually such a toxic place and nobody involved wanted to be there and nobody involved was happy or enjoying that moment and it was all like high school bullying. And it, it, it's just, it's, it's not good. It's not, and I want to know what you're thinking about this. Again, David is one of the biggest YouTubers on this platform um, and people coming forward against him does not affect him at all. Like, doesn't affect his numbers, whatever. He's at like that stage on YouTube. Like, David is looked at like a god on YouTube, but it still doesn't stop us from having the conversations that, you know, the work environments in these content houses, in these friend groups, needs to be better than straight up bullying, straight up uh, making fun of people's appearance. They're, you know what I mean? If you have to resort to that for comedy, evaluate yourself, you know what I mean? And I hope David takes this time to like reevaluate what he's going to do moving forward in the vlogs with the friend groups and how much he needs them. You know what I mean? We can talk about it below though, bestie. What are you thinking about this? Yeah. No, go on. You're fine. Go on. Mm-hmm. See, yeah. I just think it's a conversation, I agree with you, that needs to happen. And especially moving forward in his content, because people will be able to see it happening to his other friends, and be like, that's not okay. Mm -hmm. You made some good points, bestie. Okay, I love you. I'll see you in the next one. I hope you're having a great day. Bye!